Okay guys, in this video today, we're gonna to talk about how to find subcontractors for your project that you're doing, whether you're a contractor or you're a homeowner. Let's get started. All right, a little bit about myself. My name is Zach Blinkensoff. I'm the owner of a company called Digital Roofing Innovations. I'm a licensed general contractor and roofing contractor in over nine states. I'm also a U.S. military veteran, so I promise you came to the right place to get your information. Okay, before we get too far along, I want to make sure that we all understand the difference between a contractor and a subcontractor in kind of reference to this video. Now, when I refer to a contractor, I'm talking about a roofing contractor, HVAC contractor, plumber, electrical contractor. Typically, these people have more comprehensive businesses. They typically have office personnel, they have websites, they have general liability, workers' comp, they have their own billing, they, they're a, a, an actual business business. And then when I refer to a subcontractor, I'm talking about someone who just does labor. Typically, these are the people that you actually see working on top of the roof. These are the people that are Maybe it's just one or two guys, maybe it's a whole crew, but they're the ones who mainly just do the labor. They're not having to carry, they, they, most of them do have their own workers' comp and general liability, but most of them don't have an office, don't have office staff. They, um, they don't have their own billing. They don't go out and get their own jobs. They rely on the contractors themselves to go get the work. Now, of course, you may also think of the contractor as a general contractor, which is what I am, and a prime contractor, but at the end of the day, people who own businesses, we're going to refer to them as contractors in this video. Whether you're a contractor yourself or you're a homeowner and you're looking to go out and do a project, whether you're doing roofing or painting or HVAC or whatever the case may be, you need to really figure out how you're going to approach this project. Now, I'm mainly going to talk about how it is as a contractor, but this also can apply if you're a homeowner as well. So contractors out there, let's pretend that you win this project. And this is actually a project that we are getting ready to start. I'm currently in Gorham, New Hampshire, and this is a project for the National Forest Service that we're getting ready to start. And on this project, we're going to be replacing the roof. We're going to be updating uh, all these dormers around the, the chimney. We're going to be updating the siding a little bit. We're going to be installing some electrical equipment. We're going to be building a handrail off to the side of the building. And... Yeah, just some odds and ends stuff that we're going to be doing, basically lights, roofing, all this stuff. So I obviously have multiple trades that we're going to be bringing in on a project like this. Now, granted, this is a smaller job. But I think it's really good for you know homeowners to see something, how we approach this as a contractor. So since I'm the prime contractor on this job, I had to figure out whether I'm going to use contractors. I'm going to hire an you know, HVAC, if, or I'm going to hire an actual electrician, or if I'm just going to try to find a guy who does electric work am i going to find am i going to bring in roofing subcontractors or am i going to hire my own roofing company to come out here and do this so there's a few moving parts on making sure this is done correctly on top of we're painting this entire building okay let's talk about hiring actual contractors so there's a lot of benefits to hiring an actual contractor if you actually hire a contractor you're most likely going to be working with a contractor who has office staff so getting paperwork is going to be a little bit easier uh, getting a quote is going to be much easier. Most of the time, they're going to supply their own materials. They're going to be on site, actually managing the project, whether it's just one or two guys or an entire crew. And then, of course, paying them is going to be a little bit easier because they're probably going to offer some type of bill pay that's not just checks. Maybe they have credit cards you can pay with. And, of course, you're probably going to get a little bit better warranty. And, of course, as a contractor, as me being a, a, a prime and general contractor, I typically don't have nearly as much worry when I hire a, a, a contractor to come out here because he's going to be managing his guys and I'm more just going to be overseeing the operation. Now, one of the, the negative parts of that is you're probably going to have to pay a little bit more, but you're going to be able to find these guys a lot easier. There's a lot more companies that you can just go find versus guys here and there that you can hire as a subcontractor. So those are some of the benefits and then some of the negatives mainly is just you're going to be um, – you're gonna to have to pay a little bit more for the service. Okay, so now let's talk about if you hire a subcontractor. Now, one of the hardest things about hiring subcontractors, well, they're finding them in the first place. You, most of them will have websites you can Google search. 
you know, a lot of times you're going to find them on, you know, buy sell groups on Facebook. You're going to have to, you know, find them at Lowe's. You're going to have to ask other contractors. It's just a lot harder to go out and find a good subcontractor uh, just because there's not as many places that they're, they show up as available, especially if you're trying to search online. But if you do find a good subcontracting company, there are some major benefits to hiring a subcontracting company. And the first thing is you're going to save a lot of money. So by hiring them, you're going to take out the overhead and profit that most contractors are going to charge. But some of the negative side effects of that is you're going to be out there halfway manage the crew. So there's going to be a lot more oversight on your part. Most likely, all the materials are going to have to be supplied by you. So you're going to have to go out and, and get all the materials. And if there's something you mess up on that, you're going to have to go back and get them. Or you're going to have to spend more on materials than what you thought. Just like if they mess up on something, you're going to have to most likely go out and have to buy those materials or try to work out a, a deal with the subcontracting company that's going to be able to cover some of those costs. And then finally, it's just a lot more just a lot more oversight on your part and a lot more liability because they may or may not offer a warranty. And if they do offer a warranty, you don't know if they're going to be around in a few years to come back and warranty that particular roofing roofing project or painting project, whatever the case may be. And that's one of the negatives is most likely the liability is going to fall on you. But again, with a subcontracting company, the benefits, you're going to save a lot of money, but you're going to have more liability and more. I'm going to a little bit in how I approach this particular contract. Since I'm a roofing contractor by trade, we decided to actually do the roofing in-house. So I've got my own subcontractors coming up. I'm doing all the material order. I'm going to be managing those guys once they're out here. It's no big deal because again, I know roofing very, very well. The other parts of the job, the painting and the electrical work and the odds and ends stuff that we have to do on this, I actually hired actual contracting companies to come out here and do that just because I want to get focused on the roofing and we've got some other things that we're doing here in the White Mountains. So I wanted to have my full attention to the roofing and then overall managing the project. So I went ahead and hired contractors in again to do the rest of the part of this job. So again, most of the time you're going to pay a little bit more for contractors, but you're going to have a little bit more safety you're going to have a little bit more peace of mind that the jobs can get done correctly but again you have to pay more and then on subcontractors you have a little bit more liability a little bit more uncertainty but you're going to save some money well guys if you want to comment below or if you have any questions or want to open this up for discussion please leave a comment below we'd love to get questions and here at digital roofing innovations we believe you use a modern approach with traditional values and it seems like anytime you shoot a video outside, the neighbor or whoever it is has to turn on the loudest piece of equipment they have.